Hey guys, I miss you. I miss having you in the studio. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sending you a little package with some clay things in it. I'll tell you about that. And um, we're going to do a lesson on Zoom Monday uh, at 3 o'clock. And we'll be using the clay for that lesson. So in your bag, you're going to find another plastic bag with three balls of clay. They're about this size. You're also going to have a piece of string. This we use to cut clay. It's a lot easier than using a knife. You're going to have a little plastic cup, a little bit smaller than this one. And you're going to have a piece of cotton denim cloth that you can put on top of your tabletop. You're also going to have a little plastic knife. Those are all the tools that you've got from me, but also a little tiny gift of some colorful plastiline clay. I found it in an art shop and was very excited to get you some. Now you see that this clay is a pretty dark gray, but when it comes out of the kiln, it fires to this bright white, which is great for painting and glazing. So don't be alarmed that it's such a dark color. It just changes to this beautiful white clay in the kiln. The first thing I want you to do is to take about five little bits off of your clay and you're going to put it in your cup and add just a little bit of water. This is going to give you some slip. We're going to use that when we work on the techniques of how to build. And you might find that your clay dries out a little bit. This clay is kind of hard. What you should do is take a wet old rag, an old dish towel, wrap, soak it in water, wrap your clay up and put it back in your plastic bag overnight and the next day it's going to be nice and soft. It shouldn't hurt your hands to squeeze it like this. The clay can be cut with a string as I said before. So if you wanted to make a smaller lump of clay, maybe to add something to a, one of the pieces to make it bigger, you can cut it easily with this piece of string by pulling the string through. And I'm going to show you rolling the clay out in case you want to roll out a flat dish or a saucer. I'm not using this pink cotton cloth here like the one you have because I've already got a big piece of cotton on my table. But this cotton surface is the same, it does the same trick that yours will do from the bag. I've used this bigger piece of clay because I wanted to be able to roll it out to show you rolling out the clay. I have old rolling pins here. I've got one for red clay or brown clay and one for the gray clay, which turns white in the kiln. But I'm also going to show you, because you probably don't want to use your mom's rolling pin, I'm going to show you using another round surface. You could use an old glass bottle, or you could use a plastic water bottle that you have filled with water and put the cap on nice and tight. And I'm just going to roll it a little bit at a time, pick it up and turn it, roll it a little bit more, pick it up and turn it, roll it a little bit more. I think it would be too difficult to roll a piece of clay out in one shot to be a little thin pancake. So definitely take your time. You don't want to tax your uh, arms, your muscles. You just want to go a little bit at a time. This is a little bit stiffer than these pieces of clay, so it would take a little more oomph to roll this out. Just in case you wanted to roll out clay, just in case you wanted to figure out how to cut your clay. Those are two different techniques. The next thing I'm going to show you is going to be building a little pinch pot cup. A pinch pot is a way to make a form with clay, just using your tool, your hands and your fingers as tools. So you want the clay to be nice and soft. In fact, I think this lump is good, but I think this lump is a little, a little bit hard. I don't want to hurt my fingers. What I'm going to do is take this and roll it in a good ball. You can roll it on the table if you want. And then I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be making my hole with my right hand, doing the pinching with my right hand, and I'm going to use my left hand as a platform to hold the clay. So I've got my little meatball on my left hand. I'm going to push down with my right thumb, and I'm going to turn it around so it kind of looks like a, almost like a donut, but the hole doesn't go all the way through. And now with my thumb in the hole, I'm going to put my right fingers outside and I'm going to pull up with my thumb and turn this ball so that my thumb is doing this motion on the inside. It's kind of motion you're not used to doing for pretty much any other activity that I know of. And what I'm doing is I'm opening up this little meatball shape and making the walls a little bit thinner and a little bit taller. And sometimes it starts to spread out wide like an open flower. But I'm going to try and keep it 
the side straight up and down so that I can shape it later. The top edge might look a little like a rose petals. We're going to shape that last. Pinch pots can sometimes have a very rough and thin edge. You wouldn't want to drink from that. It would, it would cut your lip. Here's another one. You can see it looks almost like an autumn leaf. This is some of the red clay that I have. So I've got my little cup shape. It looks like it could be a little hot cocoa cup, right? Or a little teacup. And what I'm going to do when I get to the edge, I'm going to make sure there's no breaks in it by pushing that soft clay together. And if I have anything that looks too pointy, I can cut it off with my knife. I can round it down with my thumb because the clay is nice and soft. You see how I'm doing that? I'm just pushing it down. And I can smooth the surface with my thumb. Now you haven't seen me put any water on this clay. And that's because water just melts the surface of the clay. And the only thing it does is make the clay very slippery and make your hands really muddy. So it doesn't make the clay stronger and it doesn't really make the clay smoother. So see if you've got soft clay, if you can just smooth it by pushing it with your fingers and your thumb. Okay, now the bottom, I want the bottom flat so it doesn't tip over if it's got hot chocolate or tea in it. So I'm just gonna do that and sit it on the table. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is scoring and slipping and adding a handle. There are many different ways to make a handle, but basically you want something that's strong enough to hold the liquid in the cup when you lift it up with your fingers. Some people like to put some fingers through the handle, so they want a handle that is big enough to put two fingers through. Some people like to hold the handle like this, and some people want a really dainty, tiny little handle. What I've done is I've taken a chunk of clay off and I've rolled it, but I could also flatten it. I could flatten it with my rolling pins. I could flatten it with my just by pounding it with my hand but I don't want anything too skinny. This has a little bit of a wiggly shape, which might be nice since we're dealing with a pinch pot, has kind of a nice organic shape. I wanna have a good squared off top, and this is what my handle is gonna look like. I'm gonna attach it like that and like that, and the way I attach it is by scoring and slipping. Scoring means using your plastic knife making little notch marks on both parts, where it, on the object and where it's gonna to touch your cup. So here I've got scores at the top and the bottom of my handle, and I put some at the top and the bottom of the cup. This is where the slip comes in. See how nice and buttery that is? That's really nice. Some, some people use just a little bit of water, but I think if you're building 3D, like a cup, I think you need to have something that's a little more cement-like. Now I'm gonna to touch this to the top and mush it a little bit, touch this to the bottom and press it a little bit. And I'm just gonna wipe the little bit of that slip that looks like some spilled gravy. There's my little cup handle. Okay, I haven't done any real refinement on the surface of this and that's okay because I'm just showing you the technique. You can make your cup as smooth as you like you can spend as much time on it as you like, and then you're welcome to make some kind of a saucer or a plate for it. Maybe it would go under your cup, or maybe it would go next to your cup with a cookie on it. I don't know, that's up to you. There's a third ball of clay, and that's for you to imagine your best companion. For me, it would probably be a sculpture of one of my dogs or one of my cats, but it might be anything you like. It's some clay for you to play with. Just remember, as soon as you attach a piece of clay to another piece of clay, you're going to want to be doing scoring and slipping so that when they dry, those pieces stay together. So you've made your little objects and they have to come back to me to go in the kiln to be fired so that they come out nice and white and also hard. And this is permanent. This is not going to get mushy again, even if it gets wet. So it's very fragile. Once it's dry, it's like compressed talcum powder. Before it dries, I'd love it if you'd put your name on the bottom with a pencil. Just scratch your name into the bottom and you'll let it dry and you'll bring it back to me and in a box or wrap it in a little tissue paper, and then I'm gonna load the kiln and they'll be fired. And when they're done being fired, we can, I'll send them back to you. They'll either be painted or we can paint them here. Um, I can send you with glazes. We'll figure that part out. 
So you've got a little tiny cup for tea or hot chocolate. Um, I hope you enjoy making it and make other things with this clay. When it comes back to me and I fire them, we'll have more conversations about how we'll finish this up. I do miss you. I'm glad we have this clay lesson together. Other lessons will be about drawing and painting. Um, it'll be fun. I hope the Zoom works. We can give, give me a lot of feedback. It should be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to seeing you all at Lessons on Zoom.